Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. Good to be here again and to share with you and to rejoice in this great day that God has given us. So here it is on a Tuesday, second day of the second week of November. In case you hadn't thought about it, I'll just throw it out here. Thanksgiving's really coming quickly. You're welcome. I thought you'd appreciate the, the warning or the heads up. Okay, this morning, I've been talking about the book of James, and I'm going to talk about the second chapter. Now, the second chapter has, of course, I won't get to all talk about how God is talking about having mercy. And he talks about uh, not treating people unequally and, and giving people of of wealth, uh, deference, and, and uh, treating them special, and then treating those who don't have it as somehow not good enough. It talks about keeping the laws and how important it is to keep all of the laws. And of course, there are a lot of laws in the Old Testament. Fortunately, Jesus came to free us, not from not doing those things, but from that being the way we're judged. And then we come to chapter 2, verse 12. And James says this, let me read it to you. So whatever you do or say, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. Now, what's James saying here? He's not talking about following the law as the Old Testament wanted you to do. <clears throat> He's not talking about somehow Jesus' death wasn't good enough, you have to do something else. He's talking about those who love the Lord, how they have to act. Now, I don't know what the consequences are when this passage says that for those who have not been merciful, God won't be merciful with them. I, I don't know what that how that works out. But what I know is this, it says, so whatever you do or say, whatever you remember, all of our words, all of our actions are important. Now, I don't want you to get paranoid and think, oh gosh, I can't do this, something's gonna, something's gonna happen. No, no, I don't mean that. It just means that you are important to God and what you do and say, reflects him. That's what's important. We are the visual image of the Lord. Someone once said the gospel that you read is not nearly as important as the gospel that you live. You see, people watch people. You do. If, you, if you're holding a grudge, now, I'm not going to belittle you for that. I'm pretty sure that you know as well as I do that that's wrong. But I'm not going to say you don't have reason for it. I'm not going to say that nobody did anything really. You were just too sensitive. I'm just saying that if you really want to live a life full of joy, you can't hold a grudge. It won't work. You can't live the life God wants you to holding a grudge, regardless of the reason for it. And I, and I just want to tell you, I, I went through a really, really messy, ugly divorce. It wasn't my choice. It wasn't my doing. But it was horrible. And over the years since that happened a while ago, it's been hard to not let that hurt continue to show up. For a couple of years, it showed up whether I wanted it to or not. And then... It sort of didn't, and now I'm free. 
because I found a way to say, I'm not going to nurture that grudge. I'm going to show mercy, and I hope that she has a fulfilled life. Whether she does or not is not up to me. And the same is true for you. Whether you have a fulfilled life or not is up to you. You get to choose. And one of the things that you have to do in making the right choice, the choice for, for love and joy, is remember whatever you do or say and to show mercy to all those. To show mercy. What does it mean to show mercy? It means to not hold someone accountable. It means to say, I know you did this. What you did was wrong. What you did really hurt people. But I'm going to let it go. I'm going to forgive you. And then live a life of forgiveness. Now, that doesn't mean that you let that person come and hurt you again. It doesn't mean that you have to trust someone who's proven to be untrustworthy. No, no, not that at all. It just means that in your heart and in your life, you're not holding a grudge and saying, I'm never going to forgive you. I'm never going to let this go. And the Bible tells us here that if we show that mercy, God will show mercy on us. You know, a lot of people don't realize that when we want justice because we've been harmed, and I understand that, that God wants justice. Suppose God treated us with justice based on what we've done right and what we've done wrong. How much trouble would you be in? I'd be in a lot. I don't want God to trust, to, to judge me based on justice. I want him to judge me based on mercy. Now, I don't know exactly how you're looking at that, but think about it for a minute. However we treat others, God's going to respond to us. He's going to treat us like we treat other people. The old saying, whatever goes around comes around, really does. <laughs> of course, now it happens later at the end time or something. I, I don't know how all that works out. And it's not up to me to find out or figure it out. It's only up to God. So he can do whatever he wants in that regard. I can only, I can only control what I do. And what I can choose is to whether to show mercy or not, whether to show forgiveness or not, whether to show kindness or not. So today I'll ask the question, what do you typically do? How do you respond? I know this. If you want a fulfilled, joyful, wonderful life, you have to do the right thing. And that means showing mercy and kindness and forgiveness. Well, you think about that today. I hope you, hope you have a great day. If you have a need or a prayer concern, let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you again.